Hi everyone and welcome to The Crows Show brought to you by Foodland. I'm Mark Bickley. And I'm Alana Smith. Well, a home and away season that started way back in March now has just four rounds left. Coming up in today's show, easing the congestion, we'll look at some of the options. And join Hugh Greenwood for an insider's view of an away game. But first, concussion remains the top priority for medicos at all AFL clubs. The Crows have had to deal with more than half a dozen cases this season alone. The difficulty is that symptoms and recovery times can vary greatly depending on the player and the seriousness of the concussion. That's the challenge facing Adelaide's Chief Medical Officer, Dr Mark Sassana. Seedsman, Duda, oh. McStay, Kennedy into him. An aggressive tackle. In all concussion issues, we're very proactive with the AFL. The AFL itself is very strong, and as a club, we're always very strong in terms of managing and diagnosing it in the correct way and really looking after our athletes. That's what we're here for. He's, he's, he's on the ground. He's gone. I don't think you'll be seeing him again. I think it's been something we've been aware of for a long time, but I think we're managing it better. What happens in the world is the concussion experts get together every two years. That's fed back to us as the AFL, and so we base a lot of our protocols on the best experts in the world and that's how we manage our athletes here at the Adelaide Footy Club. Oh, Murphy's oh, on the back of Murphy's, that. He might be concussed oh. as well here. We know that everyone in most conditions has an individual response. A concussion is no different. Every single episode is different. It's why we treat every single episode differently. So we try to look at all the cues, whether they be video, the way they react, the way they test immediately. And where things are really individual is after the diagnosis when it comes to returning to, to footy. Straight away the medical staff got to him and made sure that he stayed down. Look at Rory Slade refusing Lee to get on the stretcher. He's wrestling with the medical staff. And that's where he's got to listen to the medical staff. Someone can have a loss of consciousness but recover really really quickly and we had an example of that last year with Rory where an hour after he was knocked unconscious he was perfectly fine. Other concussions can appear to have quite an innocuous knock yet they can be quite unwell for a period of time. The risk of concussion is another reminder that the greatest fear of any AFL footballer is a career-ending injury. It was a fate that confronted Kyle Cheney when he missed all of last year and much of 2018. But Kyle persevered and in this chat brought to you by Revolution Roofing says he's optimistic his comeback form is good enough to earn a contract extension. Get there on the big stage with all the fellas and having a couple of good wins, really exciting. After 18 months on the sidelines, Kyle Cheney says he no longer takes his AFL career for granted. I guess there's that feeling of running through the banner and having the fireworks and the whatever else is going on, that's just an unreal feeling. And it's a feeling he thought he would never experience again. As he waited in the sample for a senior recall, he worried his absence had been too long. Just the way the game had changed and um, I guess I'd didn't know whether I could keep up with the pace of it. And then when I did come back, my form wasn't, wasn't great and I'd missed a lot of footy and my timing was out. And there was times where I'd probably doubted myself more than probably what I should have, but there definitely is that thought of, has the game gone past me? Back with his fellow defenders, Kyle couldn't be happier. Off the field, probably comes first and we're all really good mates and then that transfers to um, on the ground so the ability to cover for each other and um, communicate to each other really um, really often and really clear is super important for the way we play. Yeah Jordy, yeah Jordy. Oh. <laughs> And like all those who've spent an extended period in rehab, Kyle appreciates the game day camaraderie more than ever. Just that time before the game where you're sort of pumping each other up and getting around each other and I mean it's a really good feeling. Then when we come off the ground and spend that, you know, 10 to 15 minutes together in the change rooms, whether it's a win or a loss, it is a special time and, you, and you're there with all your closest mates. <laughs> Well, Kyle credits the injured Brad Crouch for helping him get through his own lengthy recovery. Now, as the AFL grapples with the problems of congested play, past and present coaches can't agree on likely solutions. Malcolm Blight, for example, says the game is choking itself to death. He's in favour of starting positions at centre bounces and stoppages. So, Mark, what do you think of that idea? Yeah, look, it's a, it's a really difficult question and um, I'm not sure there is one silver bullet answer and I think that everyone's looking at different things and I've 
always believe the game sorts itself out. And look, I, I don't have any uh, real pushback against changing the rules, but I, I would like to see a little bit more trialling before we just rewrite the rule book and make radical changes. So if they are going to make changes, let's make sure they're really trialled pretty rigorously first. Well, another idea, of course, is reducing the number of rotations from 90 to 40. Has that got merit? Yeah, look, I think most people think that um, that'll make players more tired and they won't be able to get to where the ball is and reduce congestions. Once again, I'm not sure there's evidence that supports that. There's the other school of thought that says reduce the uh, rotations and you'll get more injuries and that's the last thing we want. So once again, let's trial it, let's have a look, let's get some data and then if it does suggest that it makes the game better, then do it. But yeah, once again, I, I don't like change on the back of a whim. Well, if it was up to you, you're in charge, how would you address the issue? Well, look, um, if you are going to make changes, and like I said, I'm not a, a huge fan of making change just for change's sake, I would, I would at least trial them for a year in a really good competition. Something like the Sandfall or the VFL, let's have a look at it because we know that when you make a change, coaches will try and exploit those changes and, and sometimes one change leads to another uh, reaction that you don't actually want. So, trial it in the competitions if it works then let's have a look at it all right good to get your take thanks mark and of course we can expect to hear about likely rule changes in the near future still to come on the crow show we catch up with a high flyer who's up there with the best of them Well, now that Brody Smith is back playing, it doesn't mean he's turning down the heat on the club's youngest fans in his weekly segment, brought to us by Thomas Farms. Let's see who's in the hot seat today. Welcome to Thomas Farm Junior Jams. This week we've got Zoe. Zoe, how old are you? Almost 13. Almost, so you're 12? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, 12. When are you 13? Uh, August. Do you play footy? Yeah. Who do you play for a team? Yeah, only Jets. Only Jets as well. And who's your favourite player? <laughs> You. Oh, yeah, me. Actually, you. I'm not awesome. even kidding. You sure you're not so just saying that for the camera? No, I'm actually not saying Thanks. that. Do you have a favourite girls player? Do you watch the girls? Uh, I like Chelsea Randall and Aaron Phillips. Yeah. What's your favourite song? I like any. Mainly pop songs, though. Yeah. Can you sing one? Uh, no, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> You'd probably um, be deaf by the end of it. We'd be deaf? Yeah. Oh, I'm sure you're pretty good. If you could meet anyone in the world, who would it be? You. And I'm doing that right now, so that's pretty good. <laughs> anyone else? Uh, You've ticked me off now, so okay, who's your next one? Chelsea. Chelsea, Randall. And if you had, last one, if you had wings, where would you fly? Probably to your house. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Alright, thanks for joining us. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Just another member of the Brodie Smith fan club. Well, it's not too late to join the Crows as junior members. Simply go to 19thman.com.au. Well, this year on the Crows show, we're celebrating the great grabs by some of the best high flyers. And in the modern game, there's none better than demon turned magpie, Jeremy Howe. In this segment, brought to you by Flight Centre, we look back at five of his best marks. It's fair to say that most players would be happy to take just one of them. Well, I love watching Jeremy Howe, there's no doubt about that. Jeremy Howe, I was lucky enough to coach him for a couple of years. He is a freak with just his timing and the way he goes about it. Jeremy Howe. Well, it's tough to say, Jeremy Howe takes a, takes a fantastic mark. It's obviously an inherent characteristic. He takes them on a regular basis. Jeremy Howe with another screamer. We see him get one at half time and he did. Howe's definitely one that's, um, you know, he could just take him from anywhere. He's a little yeah. half-back flanker that can fly. I reckon he had about 15, 20 marks in that tape that were just unbelievable. Jeremy Howe, that's what Howe does. 2012, the one against Sydney. Um, I think it was in my second year. Oh. You know, that was probably the one that I enjoyed the most. Well, despite all of his spectacular leaps, Howe has only once won Mark of the Year back in 2012 for that grab against Sydney. Do stay with us. When Mark returns after the break, we'll join the players on an away trip.
Winning away games is critically important to having a successful year. Almost every second week, the Crows jump on a plane to play at one of 15 other AFL venues across the country. This week, we join Hugh Greenwood for a glimpse of what life is like for players away from home. Today, Crows fans, Hugh Greenwood here, standing outside the Virgin Lounge at Adelaide Airport. Uh, the boys and I are about to get on a, on a flight to Brisbane, but for the weekend, I'm uh, going to take you through what game preparation looks like on an away trip. Uh, I'm looking forward to showing you what goes on behind the scenes. The boys are in there getting their tickets, making sure they're not in the middle seat. I'll sit next to Rat, so it should be an exciting trip uh, up to the Gabba where it all began for me. It uh, should be a good trip. The boys have landed in Brisbane, uh, went straight from the airport to the hotel, grabbed a feed, um, prepared. The day before a game we have a, a captain's run which is pretty much a light run around uh, for guys to prepare, prepare individually. Some guys take it nice and easy. Uh, you've got guys like Sloaner that run, runs around like a headless chook so each guy prepares accordingly. We went over the game plan for tomorrow, um, see where we start and uh, what we're going to address tomorrow. Um, we head back to the hotel tonight, no meetings, just grab a feed and, and start to prepare and get a good night's sleep for the game tomorrow so tune in for the rest of it tomorrow. Game day here in Brisbane, boys are about to jump on the bus and, and head to the Gabba. On game day, it's up to the individual individual to, to best prepare accordingly. Um, each individual uh, prepares differently. Um, it uh, should be a cracking game tonight, and we're looking forward to getting out there and, and hopefully getting a win. Cheers. Greenwood here checking in again. Uh, we've just finished off the game here at the Gabba. Obviously got a, a fantastic result. We were really tested uh, with a couple of guys going down, but credit to the boys, we were able to hold on. Uh, met with Pikey after the game and obviously things were really positive. From here we'll, um, we'll go eat some high quality food of course. Um, we'll recover um, and get ready to travel home back to Adelaide. I think we've got two home games. So we're excited to get back um, and obviously got a fantastic result. Cheers guys. It's always a great feeling when you win on the road. Well, we all know that showdowns are hotly contested with no quarter given, but next Friday before the big game, the two teams will come together to help Variety SA, the children's charity. The three organisations will host a lunch at Adelaide Oval to raise much needed money and promote the great work of Variety. It's rare for the two clubs to work for a common cause, but this is certainly a worthy exception. In recent years, news reports have told of the devastating effects bullying can have at school and in the workplace. In this segment, we learn how the Adelaide Football Club and Flinders University, with the support of the Breakthrough Mental Health Research Foundation, each have their own school programs to tackle the issue and promote positive lifestyle choices for children. Bullying, in a sense, is you know that repeated behaviour, negative behaviour towards someone, an individual, it can be at schools, can be in the workplace, and what it is, it can be physical, it can be verbal, it can be online. That effect of bullying can have a huge impact on that individual and it can make them feel isolated, it can make them feel alone. So the Graham's Gratitude program focuses on gratitude and kindness and it teaches the kids how to focus on the positive things in life rather than looking at the negatives. So the community team at the Adelaide Football Club go out to schools and deliver the presentation to whole schools in an assembly type presentation. Yeah, so we plan on visiting uh, about 140 schools and seeing 50,000 kids in 2018. So it's really important that, you know, the programs that we've got here at the Crows, that um, the programs we're doing with the foundation here, Breakthrough Foundation, um, and integrating with the Peace Pack, which is a well-being and anti-bullying program, um, which takes on a school-based approach. We certainly wish them well in this very important work. Still to come, if it can't be Adelaide Oval, where would fans rather be? Earlier 
earlier in the show, we reflected on how football is undergoing significant change and the game now requires players to be multi-dimensional. In this segment, Toyota Hybrid Heroes, we ask Crows players to describe the ultimate hybrid player and identify the skills and attributes they would like to add to their game. He's got that to go through. The ultimate hybrid player to me would be Hawthorne's Joe Ruffett. He can play ruck, ruck rover, full forward, and our forward, go behind the ball, so he's the ultimate hybrid player in my eyes. In a one-on-one, -on -one, Blitzaz versus Jenkins. If I could pinch a skill from someone else, I'd love to take Mark Blitzaz's endurance. He's almost made the Olympics as a steeplechaser, so that'd be pretty handy. Endurance is not one of my strengths, so I'd love to pinch that from him. And if I could steal Lance Buddy Franklin's left foot, he kicks him from 60-65, so I'd love to uh, be able to wheel on the left foot and kick goals like Buddy. That's a goal! Now we've already mentioned that Adelaide Oval is one of 16 AFL venues in Australia. So of all the interstate grounds, where do Crows fans prefer to go and watch their team? Uh, MCG. Yeah, yeah, I think Adelaide Oval, then MCG definitely. I've been to Etihad, I quite like Etihad. I do like the MCG. Yeah, yeah the MCG is a good one to go to. Oh, I've been to the MCG, um, that's not. A, that's a pretty good ground. I've been to the Metricon, that's, yeah, not too bad. And this year I've been to Sydney, so, yeah, Adelaide Oval is probably the best, apart from the MCG. Uh, MCG. Yeah, you can't beat the G. OK, let's stay with the fans for a moment and look out for a crow in the crowd. I don't think we need to go past you. If you recognise yourself, contact the club by 5pm on Wednesday, be ready with some photo ID and you'll receive a merchandise pack from Toyota. Simple as that. Well, we're just about out of time for our show today, brought to you by Foodland. Next week, we'll take you up for the best view in Adelaide. Not for the faint-hearted, but it's one you'll never forget. A reminder for all the latest Crows news, go to the club website, afc.com.au, as well as Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And remember our own Twitter page, at The Crows Show. Thanks for your company, and we look forward to joining you again next Sunday. At 11.30 on 7. See you then. Bye for now.